Good morning, everyone, and thanks for joining us here on The Wax on this Wednesday, May 15th, 7.30. I'm Nicole Maleffa. And I'm Caitlin Nuclo. All right, let's get a check on that forecast quickly before we head to our top stories. Hey, good morning, Jill. Yeah, good morning. I wonder what that dog is like when it's out in the rain. Mm, <laughs> I know. Air. Don't well, step on the poodle. Little rain coat, you know step what I mean? on the poodle or the <laughs> puddle. Or the, yeah, yeah Watch that's out. a good one. Watch out for them. Yeah, uh, they're out there this morning, <laughs> especially. Uh, in Waterbury, we have some light rain coming down. It is a uh, drearier across the western part of the state. You've seen a little lull in New Haven. Still could be some more rain building in, as you can see on the only live radar in the state. Again, it's creeping back in your direction down to through uh, New Haven, Hamden, a steadier light rain in and around New Britain, Southington, back towards uh, Salisbury. So the western half of the state dealing with the uh, steady rain, the eastern half not so much. Now, as we get through the morning hours, the coverage starts to back off this afternoon. So the icons look worse than what will be actually happening today. The temperatures inland will be warmer, upper 60s to low 70s. Some breaks of sunshine, low 60s along the shoreline. It is going to be tonight into tomorrow. That's when the steadier widespread rain builds in and that will be impacting uh, tomorrow morning's commute as well. So you'll need the umbrella at times. Keep up with radar trends through the WFSB first alert weather app. Uh, certainly could slow you down on the roadways this morning and uh, the key is when your wipers are on your headlights are on, right, Caitlin? That is correct, Jill. Good morning to you. Good morning, everybody. Let's get you a check on those roads if you're heading out the door here at 732, heading to work, getting the kids ready to go to school. Your drive times and speeds are looking fairly normal, but we are slowing down as that uh, traffic volume is increasing across the state. So Hartford to New Haven on 91, no issues, but we are picking up some delays through the capital city region, Waterbury to Hartford 84 eastbound, and then heavier delays. You can see that 149, basically 150 minute ride time, New Haven to the George Washington Bridge, 95 southbound. The Parkway really backing up and then again first alert in New Haven State Street between Chapel and Crown Streets remains blocked off this morning due to that earlier crash that we've been following for you so uh, just make sure that you're following posted detours as police are still on scene there live look outside here in Hartford 91 north and southbound you can see heavier volume here through the area things slowing down things slowing down here in Middletown as well right along Route 9 at the light normal but again just make sure that you're giving yourself some time to get through live look outside in waterbury in and out of the mix master and in meriden 691 east and westbound that daytime construction work picks up just about an hour from now between 8 30 and 9 o'clock i'm caitlin francis with your connecticut chevy first alert traffic report driven by your connecticut chevy dealers all right caitlin thank you Thieves ransacked more than a dozen cars in wallingford police say they smashed out windows in a parking lot Across the street from Gaylord, 15 vehicles belonging to the workers there were hit. And these aren't the only break-ins lately in town. Monday, police got another call about a smash and grab outside of a gym on South Colony Road. And they believe the two incidents could be connected. A man charged with a 2019 murder will be facing a judge later today. Jose Morales is accused of murder and tampering with evidence in the death of Christine Holloway. Their child, Vanessa, has been has disappeared, and that happened when her mother was killed. They still haven't found her. Eyewitness News reporter Olivia Schuler is breaking down where the case stands this morning. This morning at 10 a.m., Morales will be in court for the pretrial hearing in the death of Christine Holloway. Their child, Vanessa, has been missing since 2019. Ansonia police say the homicide is just one piece to this case. They're continuing to follow leads and tips in the disappearance of, at the time, 15-month-old Vanessa. She was reported missing in 2019 after her mother's body was found during a welfare check on Myrtle Avenue and Ansonia. The investigation led to the arrest of Morales. However, Vanessa was never found. Right now, it's unclear if police have any updates in their investigation to finding Vanessa. This morning, we will have a reporter in the courtroom and any updates we'll bring to you on air or on the Channel 3 News app. In Milford, Olivia Schuler, Channel 3 Eyewitness News. It is now 734. Let's change gears here with a good story, right? We like some good news. Caitlin Clark made her professional debut last night right here in Connecticut, Mohegan Sun, but uh, she didn't shine as bright as the overall team of uh, they won. Yeah, well, she did score a team high of she 20 did. points, but Michigan, her Indiana yeah. Fever fell to the Sun in their season opener, 92 to 71. Clark is the NCAA Division One basketball's all-time leading scorer and was the number one overall draft pick. She was held scoreless in the first quarter. She didn't get on the board until midway through the second. Clark committed 10 turnovers. 
the most in a career debut in WNBA history. The Sun gave their fans plenty to cheer about by 21 points. John L. Carrington drew the primary assignment on Clark and locked her down for most of the contest. And then Alyssa Thomas notched her 12th career triple-double. Our Mark Robbins was there last night and he has more to show us on how the Sun was able to defeat the fever. This turned out to be a classic case of a tremendous team effort against a squad that's led by a potential rookie superstar, but one who can't do and get a win by herself. As the Sun controlled Caitlin Clark at one end of the floor, Dijanae Carrington leading the defensive effort there. At the other end, stars like Alyssa Thomas with a triple-double and Dewana Bonner helped blow things open. Bonner now becoming the league's fifth all-time leading scorer. It was a goal of mine. Uh after we lost last season. Um, but to do it here on this night with this team, with this group, with this crowd, our fans has just made it even more special. I wish my babies could have been here because uh, that was the only thing missing. I think pretty much every game last season I, I flirted with the triple-double. So um, a lot of credit goes to my teammates. Um, you know, they, they make it easy for me. They hit the shots. Um, I, I just put it where it needs to go. So um, as much as it's about me, it's also about them because none of it is possible. Obviously. You know, I would have liked to play a little better tonight. I think all of us would, would say that if we were all sitting up here. And as a team, collectively, we would have liked to play better and, and shown a better product because I thought we've had some really good practices leading up to this game. But, um, you know, I think the biggest thing is just, you know, learn from it, move on, um, you know. So when my teammates trust me and they put that faith in me, it gives me a lot of confidence. And, you know, they've been in my ear all week and all through training camp. And this is what they expect from me. 92-71 the final. The Sun now get ready for the Washington Mystics to come in on Friday night. And that means Aaliyah Edwards, the former UConn All-American, returns for the first time as a pro here in Connecticut. At Mohegan Sun Arena, I'm Mark Robbins, Channel 3, Eyewitness Sports. Good morning, everyone. 7.37. Now we're checking out some of the views out there. A live view in Mystic. It's just overcast conditions for you, but it is dry. It is a different story back to our west. It is dreary. We have low cloudiness and we have light rain in Torrington. The only live radar in the state showing the light rain across western Connecticut and the eastern half. Hey, you're looking pretty good. As we progress through the rest of the morning hours, here's a kind of bird's eye view of what we will we'll anticipate through 10 o'clock. Still some ongoing rain to the west and not so much to the east, breaking up in coverage this afternoon for everyone. So there will be times where it won't be raining all day long. I know some of the icons look worse than it really is, but low 70s inland to upper 60s, uh, low 60s to mid 60s where we have rain. So as we get towards four, five o'clock, notice the rain intensity starts to pick up to the south and that will be building in from south to north through tonight. So again, a wet start for most, uh, especially to the west. The showers kind of off and on today, certainly cooler, but the steadier, more widespread rain that is going to be moving in tonight into tomorrow. I'll have much more on that forecast coming up a little bit later. Caitlin, good morning. Good morning, Jill. Good morning, everybody. All right, if you're heading out the door to catch a flight here this morning, we have one delay that's popped up so far over at Bradley International airport but it's for this evening it's not for this morning american airlines flight 1367 to dallas fort worth everything else does appear like it is on time no other cancellations or delays at bradley and if you're flying out of tweed new haven if you're flying a bellow everything there on time no issues if you are flying a bellow here this morning so that's a little bit of good news now if you are heading out the door right now i am following that incident for you in new haven uh, this is the only incident that i've been following for you across the state all morning long and it is on state street so state St St excuse me, State Street is closed between Chapel and Crown Streets this morning. And if you're trying to get around, police are helping you navigate around that area. We'll have another update coming up in just a few. I'm Caitlin Francis with your Connecticut Chevy First Alert Traffic Report, driven by your Connecticut Chevy dealers. All right, thanks, Kate. Now at 739, we've learned this morning that the Biden administration is poised to give $1 billion in new weapons and ammunition to Israel. Now, the latest weapons package includes tank rounds, mortars, and armor tactical vehicles. Congress will need to approve the transfer, and this comes just weeks after the U.S. paused a shipment of bombs to keep Israel from using it in the crowded southern city of Rafah. We are learning some new details this morning about what led to the deadly bridge collapse in Baltimore. A new report shows the cargo ship that rammed the Francis Scott Key Bridge 
lost power twice before the collision after the power breakers were tripped and that caused the ship to lose steering control. Six construction workers who were on the bridge were killed in that accident. The final report on the incident could take about two years to complete.